Welcome to Love and Friendship, this is called. Good. And this is my dear departed friend who's abandoned me to travel around the country and speak to all kinds of interesting people who are in professional positions. Uncle Jake. Hello. The, yes. And I'm your host, Michael Coran. And Uncle Jake and I had a very moving for me a conversation about a book I'm writing about Abraham. And we're going to see maybe if we can keep that conversation going, sharing it with you. Yep. So supposedly we switch roles today. This is Michael's show and I'm supposedly the interviewer. But Michael, you're going to tell us about your exploration of Abraham and your book and making it more personal and finding new sources from that, from the Abraham stories. Is that right? Um, what, and new sources you mean like? Well, you, you are interpreting it and you're looking at different um, people who have, you know, done the writing in the different languages and done the, what, the exegesis? How do you pronounce exegesis. it? Exegesis. Exegesis. Yes. So you're looking to get to the bottom of, of the Abraham stories. And, and what, what do you want out of the Abraham stories? I really wanted to understand the unintroduced invisible voice that spoke to him. Uh -huh. That I really, I want, because I, myself, being confused, a young, confused graduate student at the University of Chicago, um, when I'm scared, which is often, if I go out with someone, I remember going out with Grace, and she invited me in. We're sitting like this on her couch, because it's, it's this little studio, there's books across Grace there. is a friend? Or? Yes, I just had asked her out for a walk. Okay. And she was a divinity student, and I didn't know what to do. And I hear a voice saying, hold her hand. So I hold her hand. <laughs> uh, maybe I said I heard a voice that said, hold your hand. She must have thought I was cute <laughs> or strange. Yeah, both. Both. Okay. And um, as I like to tell it, she said, well, in a book I was studying by Sermon Kierkegaard, Fear and Trembling, Abraham hears a voice and he follows it and believes it's divinity speaking to him. So that's how I got started, interested in the story. Okay. So it's the voice, which is supposedly Yahweh. He doesn't even know it when he hears it the first time. Uh huh. He just, it just says, he hears a voice. I love this. It was like me. Go to the land I will show you. Uh huh. Leave your father, your father's home, your country, just like you. Uh -huh. Go. Uh -huh. uh, Uncle Jake is traveling around the country in a van. You don't mind me no. sharing no. that. And, and interviewing different people at, at different universities about evolution and God. Yes. Because you want to make the world a better world, right? Yep. yep. Well, that's exactly what he was doing. Okay. He hears, I heard something like it, go to the land I'll show you, be a blessing. Mm. Whatever that means. Mm -hmm. I don't think I understand stood that till maybe recently. That my roommate is a masseuse and he seems to radiate. I call him Dr. Q for DR divine radiation. He <laughs> seems to radiate um divine energy. Okay. He's from the South Bronx, has a harder upbringing even than me. And so sometimes people discover when life is really challenging, mm -hmm. um, what E. Cummings said in the poem, there's a hell of a universe next door, let's go. Hmm. You know, this world isn't working, maybe I could find another one. Uh -huh. So, I'm thinking about the reader now, or the, the viewer seeing this. Where where can the, the stories of Abraham and the story, and your discovery of the voice that talked to Abraham, what can that give 
the rest of us? Where, where can you, where will it lead us in your search? Well, I don't know. <clears throat> um, I'm just, I've been in therapy for about 13 years okay. with someone who's inspired by internal family systems. Nice. And that means that inside we have a, a family yeah. of different voices. Mm -hmm. And if we respect them and even appreciate them when they give us a hard time, mm -hmm. we can begin to have very fruitful conversations with them. Mm. So, um, so it's not just one voice. And I, when I studied the story, I was mm -hmm. delighted to discover that there were many names for divinity that spoke to Abraham. Mm -hmm. One was called El Shaddai, which means the power of my female breast. And he hears that. Mm -hmm. So I'll tell him of all things you need to circumcise yourself to be a feminine voice wanting to cut him down to size. So I, I love, it's usually taught that there's one God that Abraham believes and goes to the land and he just listens and has faith and follows that voice. And the story is open to many other interpretations to hear many voices. Like, you know this from a book you gave me, Another name for divinity is Elohim in, I don't know if you remember, but you gave me a one, you recommended a wonderful book about that. I think that was the plural in the noun, wasn't it? Yes, Elohim is a plural that sometimes, usually takes a singular verb in the Bible, but not always. Um, when Elohim says, let us make man in our image, mm -hmm. In the Hebrew, Elohim says, says is in singular, mm -hmm. but make is a plural verb. So the Elohim can mean one God. It can mean many gods. Mm -hmm. It can mean many judges. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> when Yahweh thunders from Mount Sinai to Moses, uh -huh. let there be no other gods before me, uh -huh. He says, let there be no other Elohim before me. Oh. So let me regroup again. So now I get this picture that you could be doing the family systems therapy for the early Bible stories, especially around Abraham. So that, and I've also, you know, because we all know that the Abrahamic religions it has three main monotheistic religions cross through Abraham. So, so I also hear you mention one name for God was my female breast. El El Shaddai, my, which means my female, among other translations. Some people are a little shy about that translation and call it the mountainous one. Uh -huh. But it can mean all those things. Okay, but still, I've heard you talk about uh, gender roles in this and there was like heavy patriarchal stuff and then there was you, you were giving Hagar and Sarah some much more significant voice and you and I talked recently about the book The Red Tent which was also a look at the women in this story so this family system story that that sounds exciting that that's that feels like you're telling the story of all these inner voices and we're we're seeing you know, that has all of our heritage in there and all these different gods. My gosh, it sounds like a pretty rich little cast of characters. Yes. Is that what you have? A rich, a rich divine cast of characters also. Uh -huh. So it could bring peace to the world if once all these Abrahamic religions realize, oh my, the word God, which of course means Allah, uh -huh. or is translated as Allah in the Muslim tradition, uh -huh or father in the Christian tradition, that there can be many voices and maybe working together uh -huh. to, you know, to create that, whatever, either that harmony of voices inside. Because uh -huh. I think most of us here, you know, we have an angry voice, uh -huh. a needy voice. Uh -huh. Love me, love me, please love me. We have a hungry voice. Yeah. 
Well, now I'm picturing something like Jesus Christ Superstar, but more like Abraham Super Family. Yes. Is that where you're going? Oh, because Abraham has all these divine... Family, these voices. And yeah. these voices are also inspired, I think, by his interactions. Mm -hmm. I proposed okay. to my beloved first wife, okay. Robbie Foyfrican, who is ailing now in, Ooh. in Vermont. Um, my mother, when she found out Robbie's parents were millionaires, they had a collection of famous art, uh, modern artists. Uh -huh. It was worth a lot of money. My mother said to me, why don't you marry Ravi? She actually didn't even do it directly. I'm sitting on the roof we were just sitting at. Our next door neighbor joins us and she says, Bob, don't you think Michael, speaking to me in the third person, should marry Ravi? And Bob says, yeah. And the next day, I hear a voice in my head say, propose to Robbie. Uh oh. And I didn't connect it with disconnected person that I am. And I get down on one knee and propose to her. And she says, yes. So that is an example of how what I considered my independent voice was extremely dependent on my experiences. On mama. My, 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 my mother, but it could be other experiences too. Mm, yeah. I just realized like, you know, I think it's in like Lord of the Rings that in some ways everything is communicating to us. Trees and your hair and you. Okay. But now the family of Abraham, along with wifely relations, is growing here. So we've got the big family systems dynamics, and we're. Is it is it really include everything in nature and whatnot too? Actually, when he, after he hears this, the first voice. Yeah. Go, when we're told, the readers are told it's Yahweh. Okay. But he doesn't. He's. It's really artfully written. Because the he doesn't know it's Yahweh, he just knows it's a voice. Yeah. And it, the voices, the first voice he hears, go to the land I will show you, somewhat like your travels. Um, I will bless you. If anybody curses you, I'm going to stop them. You protect you. I want you protected. Um, be a blessing, mm. which I think you, both of us, would like to be, whatever that means. Yes. Yeah to, I can learn it from my roommate, radiate, you know, the way these trees are on this beautiful day. Radiate your light, your, your beauty. Your blessing. Share it. Yes. And feel how that other people are, you know, not, mm -hmm. you don't want, I don't want to get self-centered. Feel that you're a blessing, mm -hmm. which you are. I'm sure the readers, of, the viewers have noticed this, but I just wanted to, oh. in case there's one that missed okay, it. Okay, good. I want to be that. Yeah. So he hears this, uh, and then he hears, which is, but I think you might identify, all families on earth will be blessed through you. That's a big... It's a super support system. Tell me more. Well, it's just, if you're hearing voices and you're in family therapy, I'm, ta I'm working this ankle, then to hear all these kind of like, you know, affirmations from the voice, then that's a pretty big one that every, the whole world, all the families are going to be blessed by you. That, yeah, you're, you're, you're being supported in as many directions. The, uh, the, the voice is supporting you or the... The voice is supporting you. Yeah. Not the family. I, although if they're going to be blessed by you, they might be blessing you too. Yeah. I can feel that from friends or... Yeah. Or the even the the blue sky, mm -hmm. that everything is radiating. I mean, mm -hmm. physics will tell you this. Everything is radiating. We're made out of everything's made out of sunlight. Right. Well, but so these insights that you have band. are these insights you're discovering in Abraham, are so we've got a big wide, you know, 
bar barrel of paints here to paint with. Which one's, you know, the spirituality of nature, or family relations, of uh, who Abraham was, of what you discover, of the different interpretations? Which ones do you, are you going to pull together to bring to the reader? As well, I'd love... Um, I mean, I'm, I'm selfish, and so I'm first doing it to understand it for myself and to, to not be so selfish, I'd like to share it. Okay. Maybe, hopefully not for too much, too much ego, egotism. You know, look what I discovered. So then it's first a discovery of the depth of Abraham then. Is that well, primarily? The story seems to have helped me for 40 years or maybe my whole life. I told it in, in when I was six, huh. um, when I went to summer camp. The uh -huh. council said, does anyone know a happy story? I said, well, there was this, this man, he wanted to kill his son, and then he heard a voice that said, don't do it, and it all ended happily ever after. And I said, well, that's not the happiest story I've ever heard, but thank you, Mikey. <laughs> but I see, it seems... A happy story. ...to have been printed. It seems I, well, I think one of the reasons is my relationship with my father and I, because the famous part of the story mm -hmm. is Abraham feeling he, feeling the voice, this is Elohim this time, mm -hmm. you know, the plural, the community of divinity, mm -hmm. the voice says, test him. The Bible's a little kinder, mm -hmm. saying it's just a test. He doesn't know this again. Mm -hmm. Elohim tests Abraham and says, take your son, your only son, the one you love, Isaac, and offer him as an offering on a mountain I will show you. Okay. So here is this story that's a happy one for you, and you're discovering the depth of this happy story. I think I might have been attracted to it for the maybe the unconscious feelings between my father and I. Oh. My father had left the family. Uh-huh. To, he would pr preferred to fight the Japanese in World War II uh -huh. than stay at home with us. Uh -huh. uh, it might have been a good choice. It was a tough family. Mm -hmm. um, so I might have felt, um, and for other reasons I don't need to go into here, um, although very briefly, when I was a uh, beginning infant just born, they would force feed me because... Um, my, they had read that you only feed your child at the end of every fourth hour, no matter how much he cries. I don't know if this, you might have just missed the cut. Your, your, Jake is a few years younger than I. And so they would, my father was kind enough to tell me this in my, when I was 50. They, he would hold my hands out like this because they didn't feed me until the end of the fourth hour. When, and I cried and cried. And then I, good for me, I refused to eat. At the end of the, hungry as I was, I refused. You're not going to, somehow, this little, little baby did not want to have these horrible rules imposed. I was like a prisoner who refuses to eat the food, you know, goes on a hunger strike. I refused to eat as a little infant. Uh -huh. So my big dad, my fireman dad, holds my arm. Uh-huh. And my mother, instead of giving me a breast, the last, the last, the last, takes formula and forces it down. So that's Abraham and Isaac also, that love on Jesus. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. That's a religious education mm -hmm. that I don't recommend. Mm -hmm. But I think at the age of six, having heard that story and many others in Sunday school, mm -hmm. some unconscious part of little Mikey um, likes the fact that that story has a happy ending. Mm -hmm. That just like I eventually got food, although I, that wasn't happy for me being mm -hmm. forced that way. Mm -hmm. So maybe I would have loved a happier ending than what exactly happened to me. Mm -hmm. So I can feel a lot now what you're getting from the exploration. What do you think that the a reader can can get from this exploration that you're doing. 
That's a challenging question. I'll take you as the reader, so that's making it even Fair harder. Enough. So, as we've shared our books with each other, so, and it's maybe very challenging in any way. Well, I'm, I, I mean, this is such a good question. I'm going to take a, a trip. I don't know where I'm going with it. Okay. Okay. So, you're, you are traveling and you have been from city to city. Yeah. Meeting different people you don't know that you've contacted and to share your ideas about evolution and God, right? Yep. So you're some, and you want to make a better world too. Yep. You want to save the world, actually. Uh, that's what my therapists have warned me about. Yep. Yes. It is. Well, maybe if we all, but if it's all of us, mm. then it's not so... Yeah, if, so your joy, we all want to make a better world. Okay. Right, so maybe save is... Um, yes, yeah, too too much, but okay, much. we all want to make a better world. We all want to make it, you want, we, we want to do as best we can. Yep. I've had delusions of grandeur myself. Okay. But fortunately, <laughs> they're not, I don't know where they are now. But at least I want to be as sane as you as, and say, as your therapist said, that might not be such a great idea, and it might be good to just make step by step make the world a little bit better. Okay. So you're traveling around and you want to make a better world. Yeah. And that's super similar, similar to Abraham, who was in a pretty bad shape then. Mm. I mean, his his father, his his brother died right in front of his father. Maybe his father killed his brother. He was forced to marry his half-sister. That's a tough... Mm. They had no children, maybe because they had no, rela no intimate relations. So he was in a tough place. Mm -hmm. and, his, and his father wanted to go to Canaan, but stopped at a place along the way because it was comfortable for them. So his father didn't even live up to his, the father's dream. So it's then that he hears this call. That Abraham hears the call. Right. Like you and I. A call, a call to at least make a better world. Okay. And go. You're braver than I. It's go to the land I will show you. And you don't... And you're more like that than I. I mean, I did go to Israel for three years. Okay. Knowing no one. Which was... Um, Thin line between courage and stupidity, <laughs> but it helped change my life for the better, hugely good, for the better. Good. I wanted to help other people, and it was really a great help to me living in Israel. Um, one brief help, it, when I when I was Christian, I still am a Christian, but love your neighbor as yourself. Mm -hmm. um, do unto others as you would have them. In the Jewish tradition from Hillel. Hello says, if I'm not for myself, who will be for me? Mm. So to begin with yourself, and if I'm only for myself, what am I for? That's such a healthier place to begin. Mm -hmm. So I, I did go to that, like you, when I was younger, I went to this unlo unknown land for three years, mm -hmm. and it really did help heal me. Mm -hmm. So we're both, you living it now, are like Abraham. You're going and you're wanting to make a better world. Mm -hmm. Now what moves you, we only have um, 50 seconds, what moves you to go? Um, yeah, being inspired, having a vision. Oh, so this, so it's very similar. Okay. Is the vision verbal, visual, um, kinesthetic, all? It's between love and, and intellectual, I have to say. So what do, you, what do you mean by love? We have... People who... You see the world be a better place. You see connections being made much more readily. That's a, a place that inspires me. And so you want to contribute to that? I want to be part of making that, that world. Yeah. Making this. Well, stay tuned. We're going to have another half hour. I'm sure you're riveted to find out what happens when you move to go to a land to bless the world.